In this video we're going to talk a little bit about finding the domain of a logarithmic function and how to find, identify its vertical asymptote. So, in general, if we have y equals log of x or natural log of x or log of any base of x, the domain is that x has to be greater than zero. And the graph looks something like this. So it's only got a domain of uh, positive values and it's got a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. Now what's going to happen is we'll look at logarithmic functions that are shifted left and right and that changes where the vertical asymptote is. For instance, if we had the function y equals log of x plus two, that would shift our graph two units to the left. Then that shifts the vertical asymptote two units to the left and so on. Now what we need, remember, we cannot take log of zero or a negative number. So to find the domain, what we could do is we could set x plus two, we know that that has to be greater than zero, and solve that for x. So we guess x has to be greater than negative two. Now that place that makes it zero, in this case, negative two is what makes it zero, is our vertical asymptote. So our vertical asymptote in this case is x equals negative two. Now this process will work as long as what we have in here is linear. And we'll look at a quadratic one here in a second. Uh, let's do another one. So y equals log of three minus four x. And we want to find the domain. And we're just going to do this algebraically. We can verify this with a graphing calculator. We know that we need three minus four x to be greater than zero. So let's see if we can get our domain. That means we need three, we're going to add four x to both sides to be greater than four x, or now and now divide both sides by four, and we get that x has to be less than three-fourths, or if we wanted it in interval notation, it'd be negative infinity to three-fourths, not including three-fourths. Again, our vertical asymptote is at the point that makes a zero in the log, so in this case it's at x equals, happens at three-fourths. So that's how we can look at the domain and identify a vertical asymptote. I want to do a little bit more interesting example where maybe we have a quadratic in our logarithm, and we got to determine the domain. Let's say we have, and again these are logs of any base, I just happen to be doing base ten, Let's say we have log of x squared minus four, and we want to find the domain. Well, we know we need x squared minus four to be greater than zero. Now, in this case, I don't recommend solving it as if it were linear like we did in the last ones. We need to figure out where x squared minus four is greater than zero. Well, first thing we're gonna do is figure out where it is zero. So what we'll do is we'll make a little number line for x squared minus four, and let's see, where is x squared minus four equal to zero? Well, this guy will factor into x minus two times x plus two equals zero. So we have zeros at two and negative two. So I'm gonna put those on my line. And now remember, we do not want to include zero in this case because log of zero is undefined. Now, the reason I did this is because I'm gonna pick where my function is positive and where it's negative. All I need are test points. So for instance, if I were to use zero, any place in between here, it's always gonna have the same sign because we picked the points where it would switch signs. If I put zero in here, zero minus four is negative. So I know it's negative in between negative two and two. Let's pick a point to the left, say negative three. If I put negative three in and square it, I get positive nine minus four is positive. I don't care what it comes out to be, just care if it's positive or negative. If I do positive three, I also get a positive number. And so now from here, I can get my domain. My domain is gonna be negative infinity to negative two because it's positive, and I don't wanna include negative two because that's where it's zero. I have another place where it's positive, so I'm gonna union those together with the U and that happens from two, not including two, to infinity. So there is my domain of my logarithmic function. 
Now for vertical asymptotes, we actually have two because there's two places where we can get a zero in the log. They're going to incur at negative two and we're also going to have one at positive two. So it's very possible to have more than one um, vertical asymptote if you have more than one value that makes a zero inside the argument of your log.